Hello, everyone, and welcome to ArtSpan's workshop series. My name is Susan Faith. I am ArtSpan's Professional Plus Member Advisor, and I'm your host today. One of the things I like about being the advisor is it gives me an opportunity to speak one-on-one -on -one with our artist members. And a topic that comes up all the time is marketing. So we're gonna talk about marketing today, specifically email marketing and building that all important contact list. A good place to start learning about artist marketing is artsyshark.com. Artsy Shark is a place where you can find insight on market trends, find articles, take courses, and just like Artspan, find resources that are designed specifically to help artists navigate the business of being an artist. So I'm very happy to introduce our speaker today. She is the founder of artsyshark.com, Carolyn Edland. Hi, Carolyn, thanks for being here. Thank you, Susan. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. Um, I appreciate the invitation and this is a very exciting uh, webinar. I think we're gonna bring a lot of great information to all of your artists this evening. Good. Good, do you think you're ready to start? Yeah, um, I think I need to change. Review there. Okay, so I'm gonna be sharing my screen. I'm gonna give a short presentation just to get started, this is just going to warm up the subject and give you some information about the topic of email marketing. So let me get my screen shared here to make sure that you can see this. And I'm going to start this and let me know if this is showing up for you. I can see it. Great. Okay. So this is a short presentation about email marketing and why it is so important. You know, folks, there are so many ways to market art and that includes social media. I'm sure you all know about that. You could pay for advertising. You could make personal appearances and um, do talks. You could send out postcards or direct mail, invite people through the mail. There's all kinds of ways to market. However, one of the most effective ways to market is email marketing. In fact, email marketing is 40 times more effective than social media marketing. When you build a subscriber list and market to them through email campaigns, you have control over the process. You own the list, so no one can take it away from you. You decide when you want to reach out and contact your subscribers. And there is no algorithm that is going to prevent your messages from reaching the recipients on your list. Those emails that you send out, they're going to wait patiently in the inboxes until they're open by the recipients. The power of an email list cannot be overstated. As you reach out over time, your audience becomes familiar with your art and they're gonna remember you. This is the basis of building customer relationships and that's what drives sales. People buy from others that they know, like, and trust. That is a marketing basic. And these qualities are built over time and email is a great vehicle to, uh, to cultivate all of these qualities. A solid email list is one of the greatest assets that your small business has. These people who've expressed interest in your work have given permission for you to contact them. And although they can always unsubscribe, Artists have very low unsubscribe rates, and that's because most people appreciate art. They find art interesting, they find it uplifting, and they're going to look forward to your messages as positive experience. That's going to be something they want to open. And this fact gives you a distinct advantage. 
you know, think about how artists have an intrigue and, and, and kind of a status um, in our country, in our culture, and, and how interesting they are. Not many people want to hear from car insurance salespeople, for instance. So those people who are selling those products, they've got to use other strategies to remain relevant to their audience. But you as an artist are very special. So take advantage of that and use your status as a creator of beauty to build anticipation and excitement in your audience so that they're going to look forward to hearing from you. There's another reason that email marketing is so important and it is a financial reason. When you make sales, you're definitely gonna to wanna to stay in touch with your customers through email to encourage them to collect even more of your work. And it's been proven that existing customers are the best prospects for future sales. They already love what you do. They're easier to close and they tend to spend more money than new customers do. And they are the perfect candidates to refer you to people they know who will also love your work. And that continues the cycle of beginning and cultivating new relationships, which is how you build an art business. So I'm gonna stop sharing right now and go right back to this conversation with you, Susan. Uh, those are some great reasons to start with email marketing. And I just want to point a couple things out before we get started with the conversation. First of all, I use email marketing all the time in my business. And I know that Artspan uses email marketing all the time in your business. And so we're not just promoting this. We use it every day and we see the results. And I can tell you that for my own business, it's how I earn my living and it really works. So I'm telling you something that for me is a very positive experience. And I'm, I'm sure you would echo that as well, Susan, because you're an email marketer too. Yo, and yeah. I also want to point one more thing out. And that is that social media gets a lot of attention. And we're thinking, oh, I need to post on Facebook. I need to post on Instagram or Twitter. But I want you to think about those platforms. When you join those platforms, they get your email address. And where do they put it? On their list. If Facebook wants to contact you, guess what they do? They do email marketing. It's more, it's more impactful for them to do that than to direct message you on Facebook. They want to bring you back to Facebook. So they're in your inbox. So when you think about it, all the big companies use it. It's super effective. And you as an artist can can use it too, and you can benefit from this. You know, this ties right in with one of the top questions that I got uh, sent to me in advance. And thank everybody for all the great questions that you sent. Um, a popular one was, do you have any recommendations for places to create newsletters and manage your contacts? Definitely, I do. And this actually is important because there's a way not to do this. You don't want to go into your Gmail account and then just put everyone who's in your contact list in a giant email. That is actually not even legal. And it's, uh, it's a very bad practice. So you need to use an email service provider that is um, actually following all of the rules. So you could use a provider like Constant Contact. That's who I use. A Weber is another platform. MailChimp is a very popular platform. A lot of artists use them, but there are actually many different providers and some of them will have a free level, which is, you know, if you have a lower number of subscribers and you don't have as many features. Um, so there definitely are email service providers out there and it's a good idea to check them out. But if you have an email uh, function built into your own website, you can absolutely use that too. You do if you have an Artspan website. I am amazed at how many people don't realize that they can send newsletters right from their control panel. So I wanted to take an opportunity to, I'm going to demonstrate how easy it is to send out a simple newsletter. 
I'm going to do that now. I'm going to share my screen. Oops. Okay. There we are. <laughs> no, I'm just seeing you. I'm not seeing the screen yet. You probably still need to share. Okay. I'm going to share my screen here and go to my art span control panel. Now, this should look familiar to everybody that's attending. This is the art span control panel. And if you want to create a newsletter, you just go to marketing and stats. And your third tab over is your email marketing. And it's right here is where you would hold your contacts and you can create a newsletter or an announcement or any kind of email that you want to come directly from your website to your contact list. Now, if you don't have any saved newsletters, what you'll see in this section is newsletter template one and usually newsletter template number two. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. It is just what it says. It is a template and it is already formatted. So all you need to do is to plug in your information that you want to put in your newsletter. One of the things I recommend is to have everything set up and ready to go before you start, especially your images. As you can see, these image areas are already formatted and they, do not exceed 700 pixels for the banner on the longest side, 400 for the body images, and then these smaller images, the largest side should only be 240 pixels. And the reason for that is so that when you add them, they will just pop into that space and you do not have to fool around with, you've just uploaded this huge image and now you've got to try and shrink it and it moves your text around. And this is where people get most frustrated because HTML is very finicky. So I suggest resizing your images before you begin. So I'm gonna begin by putting in the logo. Now I've highlighted the logo area and I'm gonna go up here to the icon where it says to insert image. This box will open up and there's a little icon here which is to search your files. So I can now browse my computer and it's bringing up the file that I've already created for this newsletter that I wanna make. I have my text already printed out and spell checked. I have all my images sized. Now I'm gonna go over here to the banner. And as you can see, the, the largest side is 700 pixels. So it should slip right in there. I'm going to double click on it. And it does, it just fits itself perfectly in there. I can, if I want to make it a little bit larger, I can make it a little bit smaller. You just need to click on it and move the corners. Now to add text, what you wanna do is to pre-write out your text. I'm going to highlight the text that I'd like to include announcing the show that's coming up. And I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to very carefully highlight just the text in this text space holder, and then just pop in my text. Oh, I left the R, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Okay, now I can change the font if I like. So I'm gonna highlight this because I wanna change the font. I want to enlarge the title. I'm also going to enlarge the subtitle. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. I think I want to make this banner a little bit larger. Now here, I want to add the image that's associated with this exhibition. So I'm going to highlight the image spot I'm gonna to go to the insert image icon. I could also go to insert up here on the toolbar and click on image. The same box opens up, same thing to search your files, browse your computer. And here is the image that I want to have associated with that 
exhibition. And as you can see, it is not larger than 400 pixels on one side. So I'm going to double click on it. And it just pops in there beautifully. I don't have to size it. I don't have to move my text around. It just fits beautifully. The smaller ones, because they are already formatted, are going to do the same. They're just gonna pop in there without me having to fuss with them at all because I did all the prep ahead of time. So see, now I'm gonna show you what the finished newsletter looked like. Here is the newsletter, it's my June newsletter. It has my banner. It has announcement of the two upcoming shows this month. I've added a, a link to follow me on Instagram. I've added a very important link to my website. You should include the link to your website in just about everything you do, because that is where people will go to buy your artwork. You never want them to receive a newsletter and say, wow, I guess I'll email them back to find out where I can buy this. Always include your website address, always include where they can buy art um, and how they can contact you. So when you're ready to go, make sure that you put in the subject line for this one, never leave it blank. And just putting newsletter is not very effective either. So I have put New Hope and New York exhibitions in June sneak peek to try and get people to open it up. Now I've included the contact list that I want to send this to, which is the all contact list. And I'm just going to send newsletter. And now I just have to click okay. And let's open up. And there is the newsletter exactly how as I put it together, that's how it ends up in the receiver's box. The links to Instagram, take them right to see more of my artwork. The link to my website takes them to see more of my website. I wanna show you also a couple of um, members who have just recently sent me their uh, newsletters. Judy Thompson, who's a member, uh, sends one every month. She always includes her latest artwork. She includes what shows she's been in or going to be in. And she also gives a little bit of a, a talk about the places she's traveled to that give her inspiration for her artwork. Another mailing is from another member who is having a win a free print sale. It's Collector's Appreciation Week, which is a good way to entice people to open your mailings. So she has her uh, get ready for the Collector's Appreciation Week information on how to enter to win your free print. So those are a few examples of how you can use the art span tools right there in your control panel to create an effective mailing. And I think the subject matter in the subject line is one of the most important things that people really need to carefully think about. What about you, Carolyn? You know, I, I noticed you were talking about your subject line and you were using sneak peek. I love that because it get, it's like, uh, you know, you're peeking behind the curtain. So um, rather than a subject line like my art or June newsletter or is something boring, um, I first of all, I like to use the word you because it speaks to the recipient. Um, I would love to see something like special preview. Um, you know, you know, as a VIP member, you get the first look or you get first peek. Um, you know, something that gives people a little bit of an enticement to want to open. And so I think, you know, that's half the battle. Getting that into their inbox is a good thing. And you've said before, and I, I totally agree with you, that simply having your email in their box is a good thing because they're seeing your name. 
And that Absolutely. Because when they open up their email, they'll see your name and usually what you do. So mm -hmm. even if they never open the newsletter, they're seeing Susan Tortoise Faith photographer, Susan Tortoise Faith sculptor, Susan Tortoise Faith right. art, artist. So even if they never open it, it's done a good job of introducing me and what I do. Well, and it also puts you in their box and they know that you're in there. So if one day they think, you know, I loved those photos that that woman did. Now let me find her in my inbox and you will have, you know, consistently sent emails. Have you ever searched your inbox for something and you're like, there it is. <laughs> and, and so there, or they might even be looking for a word in their inbox, like photography or Delaware river, you know, or, or that you know, because you've been working in that region. So I think it's very important just to, um, to, to be able to get into their inbox, to use an enticing subject line that's going to give them a little, you know, make them a little curious and want to open it. Um, I actually uh, have an email that goes out and uh, I, I work with artists, so I'm not selling art, but one of my subject lines was, why are you an artist? So you know, they want to open and say, well, why am I an artist? What does she think about that? So just kind of a, maybe a question or something like you said, it's always oh, a new exhibition. So it's an event coming up. Um, I want to just mention something else that I know is in the back end of the art span uh, dashboard and that artists have um, access to is people can sign up to be on your email list but they can also sign up for alerts when you have new work that is published on your site. And so that really gives ArtSpan visitors two chances to hear from you. One of them is automated. Isn't that correct? Yes, actually, I'll, I'll see if I can show you that. I'm going to share my screen again here. And I will open up a piece of artwork. And right here, when you are when you add your images and you fill out your keywords, please, um, there's a little box right here that you can check that this goes out to your followers. Now your followers aren't necessarily um, in your email list. These are people that have signed up to follow your work. They've either liked it or they've checked a box because what they wanna do is they want to see more of your work specifically and they will get notifications, not from you, but from Artspan that there's new work from you. So if you check that box, people are gonna get notified when you add new work. So just being on your website and just continuing to build your collection and add new work. I mean, adding new work to a website is always good, just as far as searchability and so forth. But um, so you get two chances good, to be promoted. That, that's always a good thing uh, as a reason to contact people is that you've got new work, especially if you're not uh, a very prolific artist, but you're because you're a fine artist and you do maybe... 10 pieces a year, people are usually waiting to see what you come up with next. So I think that that works with what kind of things that you should include. One of the questions was what kind of things should I be emailing my contacts and how long and how, when, when? Okay, these are all excellent questions. I'm going to, I'm going to say, how long and when first, and then we'll get into what. Okay. what. Um, I would say once a month is a nice timetable. You're not overwhelming people. Now, if you're going to be having a big sale for Black Friday, you might want to email them on, uh, you know, Thursday, it's getting started now, and you might want to remind them on Saturday, and then you might want to email them back again on Cyber Monday and say last chance. That would be a sequence that's going out to really drive some interest and make sure that people buy before they forget about it. But normally you'll want to plan on once monthly. Um, and then what are you gonna contact them about? Well, although you could have more of a newsletter format and some people have several things going on, 
I believe that the most effective thing you can do is to have a single purpose. And so if you look at Susan's email that she sent out, she had an upcoming exhibition. And it was about a collection of black and white photos she had about life along the Delaware River. So she's bringing your attention to a live event and exhibition, which would, some people would want to come to. And that would be wonderful if they showed up, they met you at the opening and so forth. But if people don't live in your area or can't make it, then you've also directed them to your website. So this is an announcement. It not only is showing them new work, but it's building your credibility. You're an artist who's in a gallery. You're an artist who's exhibition worthy. Your work is desirable and people want to see it. And so you're having shows. And so that is a way of kind of resume building, but it's also staying current with events that are coming up. Another thing that you might be releasing a new collection. Let's say you were traveling and you were inspired by your trip to Spain and you've got some new paintings or whatever your work is, new collages that you've made that are inspired. It's a nice thing to release a group together because that's a whole kind of a body of work to look at. And you might tease that by putting an image right near the top, showing one of your newest pieces and see the rest of the collection clip here. So that will give them a reason to follow through, go in to see your website. And you're gonna to want to add a link in, that, uh, in your um, email that goes right to the collections page directly where you want them to land. Absolutely. Um, another question that I had, and this was uh, ev just about everybody had this question was how do you build a contact list from scratch? Well, you know, <laughs> I knew this question was coming up. And so on my website at artsyshark.com, I literally published an article this morning called How to Build Your Email List from Scratch. Now, you can link to that. Anyone can take a look at it. And Susan, you can link to that later if you do a follow-up email. But let me dive into it right here to give you a little bit of a preview. So this is what really trips a lot of artists up. They're like, oh, people don't want to hear from me or I'm embarrassed or, you know, I'm going to be intruding upon them. Trust me, you are not. You are going to be sending something that's going to make their day because they don't receive art in their inboxes. They get people bugging them about, you know, buying appliances or something. Art is wonderful. People love it. People open up an email with something beautiful in it and it's like a gift. So you know what? Don't worry about that. And even if they don't want to hear from you, they can easily unsubscribe, not a problem. So um, the way that you start from scratch is start with the people that you know. This is low hanging fruit, it's super easy. You have family, you have friends, colleagues, maybe people you work with, people that you know, and they know that you're an artist. They know that you're a painter or a sculptor or whatever it is that you do. And they're intrigued by it because that's a pretty cool thing to know an artist. So I would literally write emails to them right out of your own personal box, one at a time, not a blast, but to that person. So I might write an email to Susan. Susan, um, as you know, we've talked about my art and I'm so um, honored that you're a fan and that you're interested in what I do. I wanted to let you know that I have, an e uh, I have a website set up where I'm showing collections of my art and I'm starting a list where I can reach out to some people and let them know what's new. I thought you might be interested since you appreciate what I do. Would it be okay if I put you on my list so that I could occasionally send you a message and let you know what I'm up to. Now, the odds are that people are gonna say yes. I mean, if they don't wanna be on your list, they might say, oh my gosh, I just get too much email. That's fine. Um, I know people who have tried this and they've actually gotten really wonderful messages, which is just really reinforcing. You know, artists a lot of times have a lot of self-doubt anyway. You get out there and put yourself out there and say, would you be on my list? You're probably going to hear from your sister along who's going to say, I love you and I love everything you do. Send that to me and I'm going to forward it to all my friends. And there and you, you know, go, forwarding it. That's the whole idea. Yeah, and you should encourage them to do that. So start with those. And anyone who has purchased your art, they have given implied permission. Now we're talking about a permission-based email list. You can't just send it to people who don't know about it. 
They have to say yes. But for example, if I've bought your art, you can put me on your list because I am a current client and that is allowed. And then again, there's always that unsubscribe link. So if I decide not to hear from you, that's fine. Um, so that's the easiest way to get started. You can even get five or 10 people on your list, start sending out emails. You need to develop that habit. But if I'm out at an, um, any kind of an event, um, a lunch with some ladies that I know, or um, you know, a business event, a networking event, or even a party, I start talking to someone and maybe I've got some of my watercolor paintings on my phone and we're scrolling through and they're like, wow, I love these. This is so cool. I can't believe that you do this. Then just say to them, you know what? I've got a, a list of people. I just every once in a while, I email them what's new. May I put you on there? Sure. Okay. Then just write down their email list and you can add that manually. They've given you permission. So there are many other ways to do it, but that's a simple way to get started is with your family and friends because, you know, they love you. They love what you do. So you're not going to be you know, getting a lot of rejection there. And if you do uh, art festivals or art shows, always have a sign in book for anyone that's come to look at your artwork. Everybody seems to sign it and include their email address, especially if they came, they look, they like your work. They didn't purchase that day but you got their email address. So now you can market to them, you know, not obnoxiously, but once a month with what's new. And, and Les, I think I've heard you say, be a little personal from time to time because that draws them into opening your emails. You know, that's such a good point about when you see someone at an art festival and they don't buy from you, because guess what? If you're at an art festival, most people are not going to buy from you. It is unlikely that the first time they see your work that they're going to make a purchase because this is a relationship building type of a sale. And the, the beauty of getting those in-person signups is now they have experienced your work in person. You know, any website can be beautiful and can do great presentation, but there's no substitute for seeing the work in person and touching it or trying it on if it's wearable and, mm -hmm. and really getting up close and personal. But when you get the person's email and you follow up that in-person visit with, oh, thank you for attending my show. Um, you know, we had a great discussion. Um, I, I added you to my list and I'll be following up with art that you've seen and it'll bring you, you know, uh, back to the website. Um, that continues the conversation. You know, you, you leave an art festival and you're like, oh, darn it. You know, all these people looked at my work and I only made three sales. Well, you could turn that into 10 sales if you follow up. It is so powerful. Follow up is the tool that, that salespeople know. That is what makes most of your sales is that follow-up. And this is the ideal follow-up. And here's just one more quick way to get people on your list. Let's say they're in your booth and they're looking at one of your photographs and they're like, this is so cool. It could go in my dining room. I'm just not sure. I'm thinking about it. I want to talk to my husband or whatever. Take your phone and go, click. Here's a photo of the one you were looking at. Let me email this to you right now with the link to where it is on my website. So if you want to consider it later, you can always go buy it. And can I put you on my list and I'll stay in touch? You've already got their email in your system, right in your phone, and then add that to your list. It is about, you're so right about the follow-up. And this is something that artists, if you're going to be selling your own art, really have to get used to doing. When I had my gallery, that was top of mind at the end of every day was who to follow up with when they came into the gallery, what artwork did they look at? What were they asking me they were looking for if I knew an artist that did such and such? It's all about follow-up because that's what makes the sale. And, you know, it can take a long time for someone to make a purchase. I admired the work of a sculptor for three years, and then I bought a, a piece of art from her. You know, so it can be a very long time, or it could be that they buy the next time they need a gift. And that's another valuable reason for having your email in their inbox. Let's say they were looking at your work and they thought, Gee, I, and I love these stained glass sculptures of boats. My dad's really into sailing. What a nice gift for him. 
but maybe his birthday's in November. So they don't make a purchase. But when you send that monthly reminder, come October, I'm going to place that order because you're the one who's been in touch with me over and over. And I remember that I wanted to, to buy that gift for my dad. So it's, it's right place, right time. And when you're constantly in touch on that monthly basis, you have so many more chances to be in the right place at the right time. Absolutely. It's another question that was very popular. How can I turn Facebook and Instagram followers into email contacts? Well, I think, um, let's say you're on Instagram, um, you, for your profile link, and they only give you one link, you could use a tool like Linktree to expand the menu of your profile. And the very first one should say, subscribe to my list, click on that, and that should take you to a sign up form. If you're in Facebook, and let's say you're in a conversation about your art with someone, or maybe they've direct messaged you and said, this is really beautiful. I love what you do. Why not respond to them and say, thank you so much. I just, I so appreciate you're making this comment. And I'd love to stay in touch with you. If you'd be willing to get on my email list, I can you know, let you know from time to time what's new so that you can see you know, the, what I'm working on now. And so get into those personal conversations. Those platforms will not allow you to really solicit on their, you know, right on their site. But those personal conversations is where you can request and receive emails. Um, I have a, an interesting question. Someone said that they use their website as a portfolio to market to galleries. And they wanted to know what the best way is to market to galleries or resellers of your artwork? Is it the same as you would market to just the, directly to the buyer? Well, I know, I do think that there's a difference and you can certainly speak to this as well, having owned a gallery. When you are cultivating collectors and they're just looking at what they personally want to purchase um, and then they may sign up and then you're gonna be sending them messages which are leading to what is really an emotional purchase for them because art is an emotional bite, something you want to own and live with because you love it. It, you know, it relates to what you care about. It relates to what you value. It reflects your tastes. Someone who owns a gallery, they're looking for things that they can present to their own customers, and that may not even reflect their own personal tastes. Let's say they have corporate customers who are looking for a very certain look or they're located in a in a part of town where people want you know they're looking for something very bohemian or they're looking for something that's very conservative um, so they're looking for things that would might be different from their own personal tastes now can you simply put those galleries on your email list no not really because they have not subscribed you could approach them by sending them an individual email. Quite often you will not hear back because they get hundreds of these, mm -hmm. but you might pay attention to their site. You might follow them on social media. You might respond to what they're saying. If they're local, and I think it's always great to start locally and they have an opening, attend. Don't attend with the intention of pitching. Attend with the intention of learning about what is the gallery about? Is it appropriate for your work? You know, how do they handle everything? And get to know them just on a personal basis. And then at some point, you can approach them. Do you ever accept submissions from artists? And when would, you know, when would you do that? How would I approach someone? And who is that person? So, you know, again, it's a relationship building exercise. It most definitely is. And it's uh, when you run the gallery you never it's really hard face to face especially if the artwork while wonderful is not going to fit in with your clientele um, so it's hard to relay that um, what I would get often and this was more effective than an email in this instance was I'd meet an artist at an opening and about a week later I'd get a manila envelope with just a brief little note and some samples of their work very casual, 
if you think this work will fit into your gallery, please keep me in mind. And I took some of those people because they just, they did it so directly, so simply. And it was easy for me to just say, yes, this will work. No, this won't work. Yes, this will work. Mm -hmm. So you, but you had that personal contact with them. I had, I had met them prior to that. Yeah. I think, I mean, again, that's the gold standard is that in person, you know, and um, one of the most effective ways to get into a gallery is literally to be referred by another artist who mm -hmm. is in that gallery. So if you know someone or you meet someone and, you know, you're a fit for that gallery and they love what you're doing, mm -hmm. they're going to have a lot of sway because the gallerist knows them personally. Um, a question was, and this could be related to that, are art shows and fairs a good place to get contacts? You I think bet. We discussed it. Yeah. <laughs> They are phenomenal. And, you know, uh, you need to stay away from your phone, stay away from a book, get out there, be personable, just have authentic conversations with people and listen, who are they? What do they like? Um, where do they live? Why do they care about what you do? And understand what your brand story is. What is your work about? Why does it matter in the world? And why should people buy from you? And then just get into natural conversations where you're not arm twisting, but you're just getting to know people and they get to meet an artist, which is something you don't do every day. This is a memorable event for most people. I think it's actually um, thrilling for a lot of people who get to, oh my gosh, I talked to a sculptor today and he was amazing. I just couldn't believe the stories he told about his work. You know, the artist might be a little nervous about that, but these people are thrilled and you're in a position not only to, um, you, you know, give them a lot of great information, but actually to be very influential. So if they were in a position to buy, they're going to want to contact you as an expert, as the artist, and you'll even be able to recommend what might be the best piece for their home or their office. And if you have a card or a brochure, always have them with you because if you can give them something to take away that's got your website address on it, that's always a yeah. benefit too. Definitely trade that for their email address. Exactly. <laughs> um, a question that we got, and this is probably more for me. It's what can, uh, what, how does Artspan help market my work? Now, Artspan, the way it is set up, helps, gives the artists all the tools they need right there on your control panel to do all the marketing we have just talked about. But there's another element too, the marketplace. One of the few places where you have your website and a marketplace built in, and all of the subscriptions come with the ability to add from five to 20 pieces of your artwork into Artspan's general marketplace, whether it be photography, prints, originals. All you have to do is make sure it's for sale and click the little star underneath your image that says, feature in the marketplace. And what this does is when somebody's scrolling through Artspan's marketplace and they see your work and they click on it, immediately goes to a page that has more of your work that's been on the marketplace and a link right to your website. So they're coming from artspan.com marketplace to your specific website because they saw your artwork, which is not something that you can find anywhere and it is a valuable tool to use to drive people to your website where they can go and purchase. Um, I get this question a lot about um, the marketplace because some people, they're just not using it. And I find that to be silly because it is, it's, it doesn't cost you anything. It's included in your membership and it is so very, very effective. I think that's one of the biggest selling points that Artspan has. I love the marketplace and anyone who is not on it right now, go to your dashboard and get into the marketplace today and then start looking at how many more views your work is getting on your site. Exactly. And when visitors come to the Artspan marketplace, a lot of times they're looking for something specific. 
So there's a bar where they can just type in what they're looking for. So say you're, you just bought a beach house and you're looking for artwork that's seascapes or the New Jersey shore or the California coast or something like that. And they type that in. If you ha are in featured in the marketplace and you have keywords, and this is a big one, keywords that say Jersey shore painting, beach scene, seascape, your work is going to be filtered through the thousands of paintings that are on the platform to that specific buyer. And they can click right on your work and go right directly to your website to see more. How much more, how great is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great feature and I don't know other platforms that have this. So I think this is a, a huge benefit to the artist. So, I, that's pretty much all of the major questions that we have. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? Um, I have a couple of articles that have been published on my site at Artsy Shark that I've given to you in PDF format, and you'll be able to link to those, which will give a lot more detailed information about email marketing. So when you do a follow-up, uh, everyone who either sees this original webinar or anyone who sees the recording should be able to get access to that. Um, th there's so much more to know about email marketing, but I hope this really kind of tweaks your interest and gets you started because getting started is the big hump. You need to get over that and then plan your marketing calendar so that once a month, you're going to get out there and you're going to send that message out and then you're going to look and look at your results and see you know, what's happening with that. How can you improve it? And you can look at your stats right in your dashboard. Very good. Well, thank you, Carolyn. This was some great information. I hope everyone is inspired and they're going to be working on their websites right away and working on newsletters. <laughs> um, everyone, uh, this is being recorded, so this video will be available probably next week sometime. But this week, you'll be sent a follow-up packet of highlights of this discussion and some interesting things that Carolyn's including and I am including as well. And there will be another workshop coming in July. We'll have more information on that coming soon. So I'm going to say thank you, everyone, for coming, and I hope that I do see you in July. And thank you, Carolyn, once again. Thanks, Susan, and thanks, everyone, for attending. <laughs>